let's go to book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. We're going to look at verses 13 and 14. Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. The title of the message is Our Compassionate Savior. Our Compassionate Savior. Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Our Compassionate Savior. The Bible says, Matthew chapter 14, verse 13, when Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by a ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. Brother Jake, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, first of all, for salvation. Thank you for the precious blood which was shed on Calvary's cross. Amen. and washed all our sins away, past, present, and future. Thank you. thank you for sending us with the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption. Thank you for bestowing your love and compassion to sinners like us, Lord God. We don't deserve your love and compassion. I thank you for bestowing them. And help each and one of us to listen to the message attentively. Lord God, fill the pastor with your Holy Spirit. Yeah. Give him the liberty and the power from you to declare your whole counsel to us and open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. We ask you that if anyone's not saved, pray that you have mercy and grace upon them so that today will be the day of their salvation. Amen. Thank you for all the things you have done for us. Protect us from devil's attacks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our compassionate Savior. One thing that distinguished our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the creator of the universe, God Almighty, King of kings and Lord of lords, is that he is compassionate. He has compassion beyond our imagination. Only reason you and I can have this blessed hope, only reason you and I can have this assurance that we're going to heaven because we trusted him as our Lord and Savior is the fact that he is compassionate. This straight out of you know, Dr. Ruckman's commentary, the Jehovah God of the Bible displayed his compassion for all men by humbling himself and becoming a man in order to take on himself the punishment for sins of his creation so they could have eternal life as a free gift. I mean, that is the greatest compassion. Yeah. Again, the Jehovah God of the Bible displayed his compassion for all men by humbling himself. Think about it. God became a man. Yeah. He humbled himself to become a man, humbling himself and becoming a man in order to take on himself the punishment for sins. Think about it. He took on the punishment of all of our sins, of his creation. I mean, who does that, right? You and I can't do it. Take on himself the punishment for sins of his creation so they could have what? Eternal life. Thank you, Lord. As a free gift. Amen. Out of free will. Yes. I mean, that's a true compassion. Yeah. You know, compassion, the word is thrown out a lot everywhere. They say it's love, you know, it's sympathy, it's empathy, you know, charity, all of those. You know, in the Bible, they will use like tenderhearted, you know, forgiving one another, bearing other, another's burdens. Amen. So I just went to Webster's, and Webster said, sympathetic consciousness of others' distress together with a desire to elevate it. Again, compassion is sympathetic consciousness of others' distress together with a desire to elevate it. No sympathy, right? Yeah. Capacity to feel sorrow for others, yeah. sufferings or misfortune. It's associated with harmony, unity in what's affecting the other person. 
Compassion is being moved in our innermost being. The one thing wrong about so-called Bible believers is that Bible believers lack compassion. You know too much good stuff out of this book. And you're quick to judge. You're quick to condemn. And you're quick to puff up your knowledge. If a brother or sister does anything wrong, you got to put them on a plate and chop them out. Yeah. Right? If brother or sister does anything wrong, according to your own standard, not God's standard, uh, you start criticizing, murmuring. God forbid if pastor says anything wrong, goes, moves any wrong way, you know, Shows any facial expression does not go with your, you know, own standard. Man, you're like, oh, man. What's wrong with that person? And, and especially when it's related to pastor's wives, you're like, oh, man. You know, they're even worse, right? No compassion at all. It's all full of hate. It's full of complaining, murmuring. You know, just like Israelites. Yeah. Bible believers, I know. You're just like Israelites, many of you. Yes. Uh, me included, right? You see something, and just because it doesn't get resolved right away, you start screaming and hollering, maybe not outside per se, but inside, right? Yeah. Everything starts from inside, That's right. and it will eventually come out. Yes. So don't worry about it. You know, things that you're trying to hide, it will eventually come out if you don't get right with the Lord. That's how the Lord does it. You could hide for months. You could hide for years. You could hide for tens of years. But Lord, just like what he said in Galatians chapter 6, you're going to reap what you sow. You have to. That's God's law. So compassion is lacking. If First thing that when you see like a homeless person out on the street, you know, what do you think, right? Like, oh man, they're smelly, they're dirty, you know, what's wrong with them? I hope they don't come close to our car, you know, try to wipe the window, you know, or I hope they don't ask for money, you know, all that stuff. Those are like the first thoughts that, you know, people go through. But have you ever really had compassion on those souls out there? Yeah. You don't know what they went through. That's right. You don't know where they've been. You don't know you could be one of them one of those days, right? right? You can't yeah. guarantee anything. Yeah. You could lose everything. Amen. I mean, do you feel that sorrow? Do you feel that distress of those you know, souls out there? And many of them are lost souls out there. Yes. You can't be going out there and witnessing to people who dress nice, people who look intellectual, People who doesn't smell. Man, Lord, witness to every single creature. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Man, if you ever had that type of thought, right? Okay, if I go this way, it's a bad part of town. Full of projects, a lot of crimes. You know what? You know, safety first. Pastors are safety first. So I'm just going to keep it to myself. I'm never going to go over there. I mean, you have all the opportunity. Like someone's out there waiting for the word. Yeah. They're like, you're going to the rich part of the town. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. Suburban, no apartments at all, you know, everything's nice, street is clean, you know, flowers everywhere. They're always renovating, you know, gardening. What if Lord did that with us? How many of you, me, we're not gonna be we can't get saved. Yeah. That's right. Because that's not the standard. Lord had compassion on every single soul out there, Man, thank you, Lord. right? Lord had compassion emotionally as well as spiritually for these souls out there. Yes. I mean, do you have it? Do you have that compassion? You know, don't just say it with words. Words are cheap. Yes. I mean, do you have compassion for the lost souls out there, you know, emotionally as well as spiritually, right? You can't be just saying, oh, I feel so sorry for them. And just stop there. Compassion is emotional, 
plus it has to have action afterwards. Amen. Lord just didn't stay there. Oh, man, I have compassion for them. Everywhere you look, he did actions. We're going to look at those examples, right? right? Even today's verse, look at it. He had compassion toward them in verse 14, and he healed their sick. Amen. It goes to action, yes. right? Real compassion has that emotional stirring. And then you take action. And it just does not stay with only, you know, lost people out there. And a lot of you Christians, you have no compassion for your brothers and sisters in Christ. You have zero compassion. You have compassion for the lost souls more than your own body of Christ. Man, something's wrong with you, right? Like, oh, that brother, that sister, man... You know, they shouldn't behave like that. Oh, man, she shouldn't be acting like that. And you have your jealousy, envy, gossip, you know, everything starts coming in. When they seek help and you know they need help, you know what first thing you do? They need to go through it. They need to go through it so that they could grow as a Christian. That's your first response. I mean, your job to yourself is always to look on the faults of other brothers and sisters in Christ and put them down. And you say, you know, with your dirty tongue, oh, I pray for you, I pray for you. But deep inside, all you're thinking about is, man, they deserve what they're getting. And who are you? Are you the judge? Last time I checked, vengeance belonged to the Lord. And he's the judge. Who are you? I mean, who am I? I mean, you're, you and I are just sinners saved by grace. Yes. You know, we're just sinners. Right? I mean, we looked at many, many times. We're less than nothing. Amen. I mean, you have no right to judge other brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, don't go off board and start using Sermon on the Mount from Matthew 5, 6, and 7. You know, judge not lest he be judged. No. You know, you can't allow sin to prevail, but you have to look at yourself. Yes. Man, what if I were in that situation? Am I going to be actually following the word of God wholeheartedly? And am I not going to fall? You can't guarantee it, right? So before you start putting and criticizing other brothers and sisters in Christ, always look at yourself. Amen. You always have to. Yes. Because then... If you have any half a brain left in you, you're going to be like, okay, man, man, man. You know, I, I got to step back. You know, devil almost got me. Maybe devil got me already. Yeah. You know, that's the uh, number one highway to my distraction, right, with that pride included. And I'm looking down at my brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh. Man. I don't see it as much prevalent in English American churches. But I do see it more, because I'm Korean, in more Asian, you know, even, you know, Hispanic, you know, family, you know, oriented, you know, cultures, where your job is to always be number one. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, we went through thick and thin together. We're in the battlefield together. But if... She's, you know, manager. I have to be a manager, too. Actually, I have to be a little bit higher, you know. If he's got that car, I have to get another car, a little bit higher, you know. Oh, they're in a house now, huh? So I have to get me a mansion somewhere, right? <laughs> you know. It becomes so much competition yeah. that you start forgetting that you're body in Christ. Yeah. You're, you're like part of body of Christ, right? Yeah. You're saved, Christian, right? Instead of having that loving, tender heart towards each other, all you have is you look at each other as another competition. Man, what's wrong with you, right? Yeah. So when, when you look at her, do you see her as a competition? Man, I have to look prettier than her. I have to have a longer hair than her. You know, you know I have to be smarter than her. I have to have a better job than her so that my mom will be pleased. My grandma will go out there and share with everybody. 
my daddy would share with everybody how great my daughter is compared to other folks. You know what? The Lord's just being gracious to you. Just like that, he'll be like, time's up. You know, time for you to get, get your chastisement, right? And then you go from top to bottom very quickly. The Lord will humble you. When the Lord humbles his child, he does it very quickly. You know why? Because you and I have gotten enough chances, countless chances to get right. And the Lord goes, time's up. Even though he's so compassionate, but he's such a fair God. Amen. He does it because he loves us. And then that time comes. If you don't have any compassion in your soul, if you don't have compassion in your prayers, if you don't have compassion to other brothers and sisters in Christ, just know that you're going to get it one of these days. Amen. I mean, it happened to me. You and I are no different. It happens to all the brothers and sisters in Christ. We're the same. Yes. It's going to happen. That's why you have to think. You always say, I want to be like Jesus Christ. You love being like Jesus Christ, being out there, be fiery, preaching the gospel, you know, witnessing to everybody, talking about the King James Bible and all the right doctrines and stuff. But when it comes to compassion, you're like, oh, no, no, no. Me? Have a compassion to that person who wronged me, right? Who hurt our family, right? Who defamed me and all that stuff. But who are you, though? You did all of that and much more to Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And he had compassion on you and he died for your soul. Wow. Yes. And he's your savior. Yes. You know, one of the memorable illustrations from Blowout was, you know, Brother Kogo, Aaron Kogo, talking about his dad, right? So he, you know, we know Brother Stephen Kogo. He's like 6'4", you know, I mean, 250 plus. Probably a lot more, but I'm 250. I mean, he's a giant guy. And Brother Kobo, Aaron Kobo said, you know, he's, he doesn't see, you know, his dad cry much. But I guess he stuck to him when he was like, you know, 10, 11, or 12. You know, like, I guess church people are leaving, just leaving the ministry, leaving the church, you know. And that's like the only time he saw his dad, you know, really cry. And, but even then, he had compassion on those folks, right? Yes. He was still praying for them. He wanted what's best for them in Lord's will. I mean, would you even react like that? If some brother or sister really harmed you and wronged you, okay, I mean, they do have to get right. I'm never saying that you should accept their sin. So don't twist the word, you know. Sin should never be accepted. You should be cutthroat. You should be intolerant of sin. But you have to look at yourself first. And can I, I mean, I could have fall like that too. That's why you got to have more compassion. You got to have more grace. You got to have more mercy towards your brethren, right? Yes. What if you, you know, whip your kid every time they do something wrong? Every single one of them. They can't survive, no. right? That's why just like how God gave you some grace and mercy Amen. every day, Amen. you need to give mercy and grace, yes. especially to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Now coming to your family. So now we talked about lost souls out there. We talked about your brothers and sisters in Christ, right? Now your own family, right? How much compassion do you have for your own family? I mean, husbands, do you have compassion for your wives? Wives, do you have compassion for your husbands? And parents, do you have compassion for your children? Because, you know, this is something we say all the time. When you tie the knot, you just say, till death do us apart. And don't get me wrong, you know, certain times there's desertion, there's divorce, there's a lot of stuff happen, death, right? So, you know, just leave it in God's hand, you know, get right. It's just between you and the Lord. It's not our places to say anything, right? But for those, you know, husbands and wives, I mean, how much compassion do you really have towards each other, for each other, right? Are you that type of couple always looking for others' fault? 
I'm going to see what she does wrong today. I'm going to see what he does wrong today, right? Are you that type of couple always thinking about the past? Man, back 15 years ago, you know, August 15th, I remember what you did, you know. Are you going to be the type of person who actually write things down like that too? Wait, are you blaming me for this? Let me take the, you know, (laughs) notebook out, right? I mean, that's not really a compassionate heart. I mean, being compassionate, you need to have some forgiving heart, right? Are you going to be just bitter all your life? It's not really living if there's no compassion between husband and wife. Whoever's listening, none of us are perfect, especially husbands aren't perfect. Man, that's what you have better half. Right? Yes. So husbands are supposed to treat your better half Lord help like me. you should. Like how Lord said to, you know, how he loved the church, you yes. ought to love your wives. Preach. And wives are supposed to submit to your husband. Yes. You can't be this backward time in this world. I mean, you could hate me for it, but this is what the Bible says, right? Yes. You know, wives, submit yourself to your husband. Yes. Right? Amen. But obviously, husband has to be head of the house and godly husband. Yes. Right? You know, you're not going to be submitting to, you know, doing drugs, you know, right. drinking and smoking and right. doing all this wicked stuff. You, know, just, you say no to your husband in those things, yeah. right? Amen. But if they're godly, they say, you know, let's read our Bible, let's go to church, Woo. you know, let's witness and stuff. You follow, yeah. right? It's right, right? Husbands, you know, has a bigger responsibility. Brother Carter, yes. Brother Toure Carter from... West Memphis, Arkansas. I made him first time, but it felt like I knew it for all my life. You know, you could say I'm not politically correct, but he's like my brother from different mother. Amen. Yeah. Yep. And he talked about it. And then he talked about how, you know, if men's right, usually wives will follow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because he's the head of the household, right? You know, husbands, stop blaming your wives for everything. Amen. Stop blaming your wives for even little things, right? Yes. It's you. You get right with the Lord. You become a man. Quit you like man. You act like a Bible-believing husband. Yes. Wives will eventually follow. Amen. That's, that's a hierarchy that the Lord put in. Yes. God is not a God of confusion. God is God of order. Yes. So if you are standing up for the Lord and being a godly husband that you ought to be, your wife will eventually follow, right? Yes. You're like, oh, he doesn't have it for 20 years because of you. And maybe you need to pray longer. Amen. Maybe you need to get right with the Lord. Yes. You know, instead of looking at your wives, you know, just look at yourself. Amen. You look, you get yourself in the mirror and check yourself, yes. right? We're, until the day of redemption, until the Lord comes back, we're not going to be perfect. That's right. There's always things to improve as a Christian. Yes. And don't be this proud guy who goes, you know what? I provide for my family. I work 80 hours a week. You know, I put food on the table. They have garments and everything. So what? That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So you did what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Good. But now worry about your heart. Yes. I mean, yes. Do you have that charity? Do you have that compassion to your wife? Because it's a backwards and a lot of stupid husbands out there. Amen. I love it. You know, Brother Aaron Kogel, you know, he's stupid a lot. You know, <laughs> there's a lot of stupidity in people. You know, yeah. and I mean, you and me, we could be stupid all the time. Yes. yes. Especially in man. And it's like you put your children above your wives a lot of times. They're like, oh, you know, where does it sit in the doctor? Just listen. You know, stop complaining and trying to pick out what's wrong with message. Just listen Amen. and then take yes. it into your heart. I mean, if you're a type of husband, even wives, who's like your life revolves around your children only and you don't care about your other half, yeah, yeah something's wrong with you. Yes. You know, you, got, you need to get on your knees and get right and think about what other half means to you, mm-hmm. right? You're joined 
That's one. Amen. Your children, they grow up, they're going to be gone. Yeah. You know? I'm not saying that you don't love them. You do love them as your children. Yes. Raise them up like a godly man and woman. Amen. But it's about you and your spouse, right? I mean, how much charity and compassion do you have for each other? Do you feel your spouse's distress? Do you feel your spouse's you know, emotional pain, whatever they're going through? Do you sympathize them? Do you empathize them? That's why a lot of Christian families always break apart. Because at the top, they don't have compassion towards each other. So when you don't have compassion towards each other, where you can't accept any little fault from your other half, then you're going to crumble. Yes. If men were to stand straight and right for the Lord, I honestly believe unless the woman just deserts the person or unless the woman, unfortunately, you know, passes away, it's going to work out. But when men gives up, not being like a man, then it's not going to work out. That's true. Yeah, simple as that. Yes. It is humbling, and it is also a very serious matter. You have to understand, if Lord saved you and I from hell through the pre precious blood of Jesus Christ, and he's our Lord and Savior, he humbled himself as a man and died for us, right? It's not too difficult of an ask for you to humble yourself, me to humble myself, Amen. and start having compassion to yeah. others, right? That's why, you know, it's a, uh, brother said it up there, preachers, it's a false humility, right? Yes. You're like testifying, during testifying time, you're like, oh, I've been such a sinner, you know, I did this, this, this to my wife, and I did this, this to my husband, wow. you know, my children. We don't want to hear your sin. Amen. That's not going to glorify God, no. right? It's going to bring shame to your face. And I think it was Brother Carter. He said, just tell it to their face. <laughs> Amen. Right? Yeah. Don't be a third person indirect. It's the worst. Yes. I mean, that's one thing I hate it. You know? I mean, if I do it, I hate myself. You should not be that person who always indirectly sends your message. Right. I'm talking to Brother Richard. Hey, did you know there was a guy, you know, you know, who did this, you know, and who did that? Man, I really can't stand that guy. Yeah, you know? And then, you know, kind of resembles you. But I'm not saying it's you, you know, you know, kind of talks like you, but I'm not saying it's you, right? You know, drives the similar car, you know, but I'm not saying it's you. You know, man. I can't stand that person, the family, and blah, blah. Man. But some people always like that. Yeah. And they're like always using others. Mm -hmm. There's no compassion. That's just full of hate. You know, that's, that's just, you know, like, oh, you know, did you hear? You know, what's the worst, though? Sister Trace is there. I'm talking to Brother Richard. Hey, have you heard about your wife? You know. Tell me. She's right there. <laughs> Man, you're not brave enough? You're like, you should just go tell her if you have any issues with that person. Amen. Yeah. Oh, did you know, brother? You know. Can you relay that message to her? And I'm like, I could see her right there, but can you relay that message? Man. Indirect Christians are very, very, you know, contaminated, and they have no compassion. Yes. Yeah. You did, what if the Lord did that to you, right? Or it's like, you know, this person, that person, but he's talking to other person, and a third person, and people get confused, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. You want to be compassionate? Have a man-to-man, -man, one -on one-on-one conversation, and show your real compassion to that person. Yes. Yeah. Don't walk around the bushes, right? Yeah. That's not being compassionate. You know, that's being a coward. Yeah. Well, that's being a chicken. Yes. Right? You and I have been chicken too many times. Amen. Right? We just got to stand, stand and then be bold about it. You know, I'll go quickly. You know, you don't have to go. You could put it down on your notes. You know, Christ showed his compassion by caring for the crowds. Right? You know, Matthew 14, 14. 
you know, our Lord showed his compassion by his care for the crop, right? And we all know the story when he fed the 5,000, it comes out in all the gospels, right? You know, he had compassion for them. Lord was deeply concerned, you know, his, his bowls ached. His whole body was aching because he felt their distress. And Lord compels comfort, you know. Christ's compassion led him to provide comfort for the multitude, right? I don't know what kind of compassion you have, but you should have compassion where it brings comfort to your brethren, to the lost souls out there. You know, when a brother, sister could just lend the, you know, hearing ear, Yes. to brother or sister going through the hardship, that's all they need, Amen. right? Amen. They just want to pour out something in their heart, yes. you know? Then just be that person. Provide some comfort instead of always trying to get your own ways and trying to get your own comfort, you know? How are you really, you know, how the Lord fed the you know, multitude? How are you really spiritually feeding, you know, other brothers and sisters in Christ? Because you could feed any brothers and sisters. You could feed any lost souls out there, right? How are you feeding them? And if you were to have a chance, you know, there's a widow of Nain, right? And Lord consoles the crying, right? When were the last time you consoled, comforted, had compassion on those who were crying, right? Yeah. I mean, Lord raised the dead, right? Yeah. The son from the dead. And Christ cures the condition in Matthew 20, 34, right? Jesus responded to the blind man's plea for mercy. And he cared for them. And he restored them, their vision, gave him guidance. When was the last time you actually cared for the conditions of this world, conditions of your family, and conditions of your brothers and sisters in Christ? But... You're so selfish, you're always about you, right? Yeah. You only care about your own condition. How am I doing today? Isn't that your first question you ask, right? Amen. You know, how am I doing today? You go to your family, how am I doing today? You, know, you go to your coworker, how am I doing today? Your classmate, how am I doing today? It's always about you. Right. Such a selfish Christian. Yes. You should be concerned about you know, others. Amen. You hear it all the time because you and I need to hear it all the time. Yes. Because unless we get our hearts right on a daily basis, just direction, like other's direction, just suddenly comes back to this, you know, your wicked flesh. Amen. And lastly, you know, Christ showed his compassion by cleansing the contaminated. And he saved you and I. If you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have quote unquote experience the greatest compassion someone could ever experience, right? Yes. And his compassion moved him to cleanse those lepers in Mark 141. His compassion moved him to save you and I Amen. from hell. Yes, thank you, Lord. And without that compassion, man, you and I will be just going straight down to hell. I mean some of us, even myself, right? We wouldn't be alive right now. No. Knowing our personality. Either you You'll be in jail, or you'll be dead already. In hell. But by God's grace, you know, because of his compassion, you and I are still able to praise him and give him the glory when we can. Why? Because you and I do know that without his compassion, we would have been rejected. We couldn't Amen. get to that standard of heaven. And we would have been just living this pitiful life yeah. without joy, just burning in hell, yes. waiting for us. Just lake of fire is waiting for us. But don't be that Christian either who's lost your joy. I'm sure some of you remember your joy when you got saved, like that first love, you know, like first few months, you know, some people maybe a year plus, you were so close to the Lord. You loved your brethren. You loved the lost souls. You know, you have full of compassion because you experienced compassion. But it dried up. You, know, you don't have it no more. 
the lives, toils of life, issues of life, you know, things of the world, devil's attack, have just dried you up. You know, you got to come back. Amen. You got to find that again. You got to come back to the Lord. Yes. Right? You got to ask. If I, if, I mean, a lot of times it's because of sin problems, right? Yes. You know, confess your sins like 1 John 1, 9 and get right with the Lord. You fall, you get up. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's the greatest, to me, as a Bible believer, if you don't have compassion, you can't really be a Bible believer. No. I mean, that's like that's the, one of the greatest characters of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, yeah. that compassion. That's why he can put up with you. That's why he could put up with me, because of compassion. Why can't you put up with the world, lost sinners? I'm not saying the worldly system, right? Yeah. Those sinners on their way to hell. Why can't you put up with your wife, your husband, your children? Yeah. Why can't you put up with your brothers and sisters in Christ? Why can't you? you got to examine yourself. Yes. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You, know. you don't really know compassion of Christ unless you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior. There are many churchgoers who's been going to church for many, many years and who doesn't know where they're going after they die? If you're that person where you don't have 1,000% assurance where you're going after you die, this is an opportunity for you to truly know for sure. Do you know that you're a sinner on your way to hell? Jesus Christ died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. The Bible says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. You just have to repent, turn from your way, and turn to the Lord. Believe that only Jesus Christ can save you. And trust him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth's confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says in John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. If you know you're a sinner on your way to hell, you don't have the assurance of salvation. You never accepted Christ knowing you're a sinner on your way to hell, believing that he died for your sins, believing that his blood can wash all your sins and receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. In this prayer, receive Christ as your Lord and Savior and get saved from hell once and for all. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. Right now, the best way I know how, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash away all my sins. Thank you, Lord, dying for all my sins and coming into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. If you pray with all of your heart, knowing that you're a sinner on your way to hell, believing that Jesus is God who died for your sins, and with repenting heart, if you receive Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you have eternal life. Simple as that, right? You didn't do anything. Christ did everything. Yeah, it's Jesus plus nothing. There's no reason for you to worry about it. You know, again, you put your trust in the perfect sacrifice of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And Bible will never lie. You have a perfect proof, Amen. right? You just go. It's, a, it's like a birth certificate. It's a document, yes. official document that you trust in Christ and him alone as your Lord and Savior. You have eternal life, Amen. right?